Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the final act of a sizzling weekend of action. From the best league in the world. A fitting celebration of 13 memorable years that has made the Premier League the hottest sporting prospect across the globe. It was exactly one month ago that Liverpool and Crystal Palace last met. Over the weekend, it was almost as warmed out by the Albert Dock as it was in Singapore when goals either side of half-time secured victory for Klopp over Vieira's team. It's been a little cooler today, a little greyer, a sprinkling of rain, but still close. But we have come to one of football's great cathedrals, expecting a Liverpool storm. A backlash from a side that lacked its usual fluency on opening day, but knows how to preach to the choir. Crystal Palace know what it's like to come here and win between May 2015 and April 2017. They won here three times in a row. But they are their only wins at Anfield in 30 years of Premier League football. And they certainly know how to lose here. Just ask those who featured on that September night in 1989 when Palace suffered their record defeat. Everyone feels the heat when they come to Anfield. Well, at least we can guarantee the pitch won't be too dry tonight. Liverpool in red, Palace in white, Liverpool attacking the Anfield Road stand that houses the away support, those colourful Palace fans that have braved the chaotic rail network and motorway traffic to watch their team compete with one of the best. And we have one of the best too in the commentary box tonight. Danny Murphy, the former England and Liverpool midfielder, is in the TalkSport game night commentary box. And where do you expect Liverpool to target Crystal Palace? I think they're going to try and get in behind them as soon as possible and use the pace of the front three. They've certainly got the legs on the, on the back three of Palace, that's for sure. Get the ball forward nice and early. The referee is Paul Tierney and uh, Crystal Palace in white have the ball over on the far side Liverpool quickly get it forward Salah with a little trick to take on the figure of Jeffrey Schlupp and Liverpool start with Alisson in goal Trent Alexander-Arnold Nat Phillips in alongside Van Dijk in the absence of Matip Robertson at left back Elliot Fabinho and Milner in midfield with Salah, Nunez and Diaz up top for Crystal Palace Whiter is their goalkeeper and he might be tested here because Robertson's coming forward into Diaz Misway inside the Palace half of the field they shift it on towards the right six yards in from the touchline across early in towards Nunez punched away by Whiter and it's back to Milner who shoots over oh. the top of the crossbar and he was rushing to get the effort in as he went charging towards goal after the initial ball into the box had been punched away by Guaita. It fell on the edge of the box to James Milner and he will feel as if he should have hit the target. Danny Murphy. He should have scored. There's no pressure on the ball from Palace. All the men behind the ball, but he forgets to put pressure on Trent Alexander-Arnold, whips in a good ball. The keeper gets a touch, but Milner's done great to get the knockdown, but he's just rushed his shot there. Just, just snatches at it a little bit but superb start for Liverpool yeah good start for Liverpool Crystal Palace with Whiter needing some attention now he is their goalkeeper he's protected by a back three today of Ward Anderson and Gurhi two full backs will be pretty deep as well Klein and Mitchell in midfield Dekure Eze and Schlup Ayu and Zaha up top and already warming up down in front of us is the England goalkeeper Sam Johnston who signed on a free from West Bromwich Albion on a four year deal in the summer getting ready if necessary to put the gloves on in this early stage but you saw what 
Darwin Nunez brings to this Liverpool yeah. team in that early exchange because Trent Alexander-Arnold had no hesitation in trying to search him out with a ball from the right. 100% and then of course that what that does is it provokes a reaction from the goalkeeper where he's scrambling and trying to get there before him. Hence the fact Milner got the knockdown but just looking at Palace and the way they set up actually it looks like Eze might be playing further up on the left and Ayew on the right with just the two of the lads in midfield. It's an interesting formation from Palace. The one thing you have to do against this Liverpool side is stop Trent Alexander-Arnold being having time on the ball because you know, and you've seen it many times, Sam, wherever he is on the pitch, if you give him time to look up, he's going to hurt you. Yeah, it certainly is, and he's already uh, scored in the Community Shield this season. Didn't have the best of days down at Craven Cottage, who did in a Liverpool jersey. Well, James Milner certainly did. He came on and changed the game, actually, and he's had the first chance of this match, and maybe he should have scored it. We've had a lengthy de delay as a result of the collision between Nunez and uh, Guaita, and then the follow-up from Milner. Eventually, Guaita's got back to his feet, and I suppose um, if he's OK... There might be some cynics inside Anfield suggesting that, you know, let's take the heat out of the occasion as early as possible. We've played, well, we haven't played, but we've reached 3 minutes and 27 seconds on the big clock. Away to our right, and it is Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil on game night on Talk Sport. Live on Monday evenings here every time there's a Monday night game. We will be live bringing you the best football coverage on the dial. The ball sent by Guaita around towards the right side chested down and straight out of play by Jordan Ayew and it's away for a Liverpool throw five, six yards inside Palace territory Robertson into Harvey Elliott who stretches for it pokes it round the corner and now Fabinho marauds over the halfway line through the centre circle and to the right picked up by Mo Salah who chips the ball into the area looking for Elliott who's made a good late run into the box but Guaita is going to get there first all started from a little bit of intricate play from Elliott in the middle nice little flick round the corner Nice confident start from the young man. And Liverpool have had such a cracking 2022. They have missed out maybe on the big prizes at the end of last season. Just, but they haven't lost a single Premier League game in this calendar year. And there were a few signs that Crystal Palace were not fully up to speed last week. But Vieira had a lot of senior players missing for their pre-season tour. It wasn't the ideal preparation for the new campaign. There was almost an opportunity there for Zaha to capitalise on a mistake, but a handball has been given, and Liverpool have it inside their own half. And it's with Nat Phillips making his first appearance for the Reds in well over a year in the Premier League, searching the ball out towards the right-hand side is Alexander-Arnold, looking for Salah, back to the edge of the area, Elliot with a strike, takes a bobble off a defender, Anderson and then Gurhi managed to get it clear Van Dijk engages and comes forward and stoops and heads the ball forward Nunez can't bring it down, it runs out towards the near touchline, Diaz can't keep it in and it goes out for a throw in deep inside Palace territory, 0-0. Well again it's Trent Alexander-Arnold, free on the ball gets his head up, plays a beautiful pass outside the left, the wing back to Salah and they're in down the right-hand side it looks like they're when they're defending they've got a 5-4-1 Palace Zara's isolated up on his own but Eze has either got to stop Trent Liverpool won it back again it's shifted out towards the far side you're about to say he's, he's either got to go out himself Eze or he's got to get the wing back out to to pressure Trent Alexander-Arnold you cannot give him that much free time on the ball Ball is sent uh, down the right channel for Crystal Palace. Virgil van Dijk untroubled, just allows the ball to go out of play. Jordan Ayew tries to uh, stop him from taking the throw in. He didn't want to take it anyway. He was looking for Andrew Robertson. And Liverpool have it deep inside their own territory. Six minutes gone on Talk Sport. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil on Talk Sport with Now Sports. Don't forget with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Liverpool versus Palace live tonight for 11 99 no contract. Search Now Sports. Phillips, a little tap to Elliot, deep inside his own territory, just about five yards outside the D, sent wide to Alexander-Arnold, who's allowed to play the ball forward again, Salah tussling with Tariq Mitchell, Mitchell comes off better and takes the ball out to the touchline, and Palace try to progress the ball to the halfway line, a little flick by Zaha, Phillips stands his ground, turns, looks at the Ivorian and tells him to get up, Liverpool shift the ball on quickly up to the edge of the area, Nunez takes it down, a little tap to the edge of the box, tracked by Anderson but he shrugged him off and chipped it back to the edge of the penalty area a lovely touch by Salah those two already on the same wavelength and in the right corner over on the far side Elliot trying to trick his way into the box he's beaten away by Eze who smashes it out of harm's way and Liverpool when they are coming forward Danny are doing so with a real menace full of confidence 
good energy start of the game exactly what you want as a manager's reaction last week start on the front foot and get Palace back and defending and, and trying to make chances but from Palace's perspective it's all well and good having men behind the ball you have to put pressure on the ball at source you can't just drop off they're still going to open you up and uh, certainly last week they had to weather a bit of a storm yeah. in the opening 25 minutes against Arsenal live on Friday night on Talk Sport they ended up losing that game by two goals to nil they were in it for a long time and actually they had two good chances to equalize before Bakayu Saka's cross was deflected into his own net by Mark Gurhi. it's nil nil here and you're listening to game night on Talk Sport the sun just glinting on the steel of the roof of the Kenny Dalglish stand opposite us as the ball is played out towards the left touch line Luis Diaz who was I think probably their most menacing forward during the game against uh, Fulham until the arrival of Nunez ball is sent wide out to uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold into the box back to Salah comes to Elliott who takes a couple of touches then shoots blocked by the defender only half cleared back towards Diaz but it's Fabinho who pick it up edge of the area right side Trent Alexander-Arnold again trying to clip it into the box Nunez coming in back post didn't quite get hold of it flicked off his laces and into the air spiralled behind and out for a goal kick but Liverpool committing numbers forward into the box and smothering Crystal Palace and creating chances at will well guess what it's Trent again great ball from uh, Van Dijk Elliot does really well great feet doesn't rush it good block from I think that was Anderson and then Fabinho ends up feeding it to uh, Trent again who puts another beautiful ball in and Nunes misses at the back post but it's a matter of time if they carry on like this Palace they've got to sort out the Trent problem it's got the freedom of Anfield already and there's only been nine minutes and it's still nil-nil Phillips closed down by Eze but a lovely delicate touch to Alexander-Arnold who's crossed field ball is searching out Luis Diaz he plays it against Nathaniel Klein it's out for the first corner of the game and Liverpool threatening to become rampant Luis Diaz the latest to be the recipient of a Trent Alexander-Arnold laser guided pass you can always tell when Trent Alexander-Arnold is going to have a good game one he's got space and two he's been criticised in the build up to the match he likes to prove a point or two I cannot believe for the life of me why Vieira isn't shouting on to Eze to get tighter to him it's unbelievable Robertson with the corner from the near side aimed in towards Diaz flicked away comes back to Alexander-Arnold who's about six yards in front of the centre circle then play to Milner further left is Robertson on the edge of the box Diaz back to Robertson a chance to cross is a deep one not the best not very often we say that about Andrew Robertson but Harvey Elliott has kept it alive it's back in again by Fabinho headed away by Gerhi it's all hands to the pump for Crystal Palace here in the opening exchanges away by Mitchell brought down by Salah tries to poke it forward but he's under pressure from De Cure. it breaks to the left Mitchell plays it against Fabinho but Liverpool just won't let Palace escape like a rabbit in headlights aren't they no composure no confidence at the moment Palace which can happen here at Anfield of course but when they haven't got the ball there's no pressure it's like they haven't they've just they, they know you come to Anfield and you know what Trent does and you're leaving him in that much space it's, it's bizarre just the 18 assists last season for Trent Alexander-Arnold um, which was more than he's ever managed before that's a good little trick out on the far side by Eze looking for Zaha now he's tied to the touchline looking to get upfield for Crystal Palace Mitchell's on the overlap he's crossed into the box he's dealt with by Nat Phillips and then Alexander-Arnold has no hesitation in getting the ball up to the centre circle onto Nunez with a brilliant leap Salah had more time than he thought but he's managed to work the ball out wide towards the near touchline to Luis Diaz anyway he brings it down runs down the left side there's space on the far touchline for Salah but he goes short to Milner instead then back to the halfway line and Liverpool once again regain control of the game Nat Phillips has not played a Premier League game since May 2021 ironically against Crystal Palace but he's settled in rather nicely so far and he's just engaged with Sahara again on the edge of the centre circle and that's exactly what Jürgen Klopp would have wanted from him yeah it's a nice start for him isn't it a couple of good clearances good tackle there ease your way in he did make 17 appearances as uh, Bournemouth finished runners up in the championship last season he was promoted from the championship he also been promoted from the second tier of German football not so long ago with Stuttgart prior to being recalled to the Liverpool setup when they had a de defensive crisis here is Fabinho in the midfield for Liverpool under the lights at Anfield on a really muggy night 
on Merseyside. It's clipped to the far side, taken down well by the green boots of Salah. Reverse ball into Milner. Tried to take it on and run into the right channel, but his touch was a bit heavy and it flicks behind and away for a goal kick away to our left-hand side. It's been a dizzying first 13 minutes. Yeah, sometimes when you set up in a new formation, it takes a while to, to get your bearings when you've got the ball and when you haven't got the ball. At the moment, it looks like Palace are struggling with the new system. Who should press who when? They're just they're just backing off and giving up and giving up possession without without pressing the ball, which is not the way to play Liverpool. Well, they uh, are a different team, Crystal Palace, to the one that Roy Hodgson left behind. Patrick Vieira wants them to become a more possession-based team rather than a belligerent, mainly defensive outlet that springs on the counter attack, which they have been. Which they certainly have been. Yeah. I mean, the stats uh, from season. last year bear that out, that theory. They leave even more possession than Arsenal last week. But Vieira was keen to point out that they will need to just attack on occasion here tonight. They can't just sit back and uh, defend the, the whole 90 minutes. That's not possible for them. Here is Phillips swinging the ball into the box, looking for Nunez. Out comes the goalkeeper. It's an easy catch for Guaita. You see, when you used to play in left back like Mitchell in a four, and now he's been playing as a wing back, he's sometimes unsure whether to go inside with Salah or whether to go really wide with him because he's so used to covering. The advantage when you play wing back is when Salah's wide right, he can really go out and press him and get after the ball, knowing that he's got cover behind him. So you can just see these little bits of confusion in some of the Palace's players when they're defending. It's almost like a double thought before the action, yes. isn't it? Which leads to a little bit of hesitation. Yes, yeah. 14 gone, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil, Sam Adderface and Danny Murphy at Anfield tonight. Sky's a little bit greyer than it has been over the course of the last uh, few weeks, but there is still a glint of sunlight in the air as Liverpool look to build from the back, having already had one or two chances in this game and looking to fashion another. Clip down the right for Nunez, who's escaping, sends the ball low towards the near post, but it's too close to Guaita, who just drops to his knees in his bright green outfit inside that six-yard box, gobbles it up and bowls it to Joel Ward, who's playing as one of the three central defenders tonight. Lovely unselfish run, wasn't it, in behind the back three at Palace from Nunez? Exactly what you need sometimes is a get out, someone who's willing to run off the ball, get in behind and chase balls down. 71% possession so far. Liverpool playing with 10 men at the moment because Robertson is getting a little bit of a tension, I think, on his left hand on this near touchline. A little bit of spray and then on a bit of taping on the finger as Liverpool look to build again. Down the left they come, the Palace right. Diaz dropping a little bit deeper, hit the post. Had a goal disallowed down at Craven Cottage. Van Dijk gave away a penalty in that game. Clips the ball down the left looking for Robertson. Robertson tries to take on Joel Ward. Can't get it under control and it drifts out of play. Tomorrow morning we'll have all the fallout to this game on Talks for Breakfast with Laura Woods and Ali McCoy. They'll be joined by Ben Foster live from 6am. 10.89, 10.53, DAP Digital Radio or via the Talks for app. And you can watch it on the Talks for Edge. And uh, a reminder that with uh, Jim and Simon tomorrow from 10 o'clock, Thomas Frank joins them to discuss that dismantling of Manchester United. Jim has sat down with him today. That interview will be broadcast tomorrow from 10, live on TalkSport. Travis Sinclair is also on that show tomorrow morning. High foot in the middle of the park, which Ayu is glancing towards Paul Tierney and asking for a decision to go against Liverpool. Referee is allowed play on and Liverpool have it just short of the halfway line with Fabinho back to Phillips. Nil nil the score. Live on Talk Sport tonight. Out to the right it goes. Alexander Arnold. Couple of steps infield to Milner, who's just dropped a little deeper. Harvey Elliott wide on the touchline, away on the right. Milner now spots Great the runner. Ball. Robertson in behind. He's going to get hold of it too. He chests it down. He tries to shoot. It'll break to Diaz. Plays it against Anderson. But there a handball. He's still shrugging him off. He's still got it. He's shot. It's going up in the air. And it's grabbed high above his head by Guaita. Still claims of handball being charged against Joachim Anderson. He might be a bit lucky to get that decision, Luis Diaz. But he certainly was a handful. Well, it's a great run from Robertson. He's onside. See, that, that you can't allow when you're playing a back five. You need to give yourself some depth and not leave that space in behind. It was a brilliant pass as well. 
Diaz, man on, not called by anyone in red, but he's got away from Ayu anyway, and then took his way past the Coro, and then a soft foul isn't given, and the ball breaks wide to the left for Eze, and then up towards Zahar, who's trying to charge forward, but Nat Phillips is on the cover, and he steps in midway inside the Liverpool half, sweeps up, and gives it back to Alisson, who I think has just touched the ball for the first time. Paul from Eze. Only going to get a few occasions when you break with that much time on the ball. It wasn't a, wasn't a difficult pass to feed Zara in behind that. Phillips underplayed it. Poor Van Dijk to Robertson. And then Diaz is a step in from the left touch line. Forward into Nunez. Doesn't get there. Joel Ward does. It's up to uh, Zaha. There's a better pass on to Eze if he can find him. And Eze now has been played through the middle. Oh. And he's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper who plays it straight against Allison. Outside. He was offside anyway. It wouldn't have counted. Actually, I thought it was a bit disappointing from Zaha who should have played it earlier. He should have. We saw it. We've got a wonderful view we have here. A second earlier he was in. That's the breakaway. That's the one they're looking for. If he plays it now, he delays and he's a yard offside. But I have to say, even when he gets in there, lacked conviction, lacked confidence. A bit like the finish one-on-one -on -one when he was in last week against Arsenal. But that's the little bit of danger for Liverpool just when there's a turnover if Zaha or Eze picks it up in those they're pacing behind that space behind the Liverpool lead now certainly there have been warning signs that all isn't perfect for Liverpool they uh, have conceded the opening goal in the last five Premier League games in a row and that does date back to last season of course but they have been going through a spell of not keeping clean sheets here is Phillips sending the ball out wide to the left Robertson looking up he's got support from Milner it's a good ball into him Diaz has taken over now and trying to trick past Joel Ward who dives in puts the ball into the Palace fans it's out well I think Diaz thought it was going to be a corner Portieri had a different idea it looked as if it maybe took a little flick off Luis Diaz and it goes out for a goal kick away to our left hand side Joel Ward wearing the captain's armband again tonight after coming back into the Palace team 28 Premier League appearances last season he's uh, long been a Palace stalwart as Joe Ward after growing up in the Portsmouth Academy long time servant of the football club brilliant professional as well super fit loves the club Klein down the right looking to try and feed Ayu who flicks it on looking for Zaha, a bit of uh, out-muscling going on between Nunez and Ward. The ball then returns into the Liverpool half. Van Dijk hardly breaking a sweat, just allowed the ball with a little body swerve to run across his body. And Liverpool back in possession. 20 minutes gone, Liverpool nil, Bristol Palace nil. Maybe the temperature of the game just starting to settle after a rampant start. Well, it was an electric start from Liverpool and Palace have settled a little bit, but they still look a little bit tentative with the ball, lacking that little bit of courage to keep the ball for more than a few passes. Again, they've given it away. Yeah. Uh, he had it, nodded it straight to Fabinho, who now on the edge of the centre circle inside Palace territory, sweeps it wide, onto the left, and now Robertson into Diaz, who's dropping deep, being tracked by Ayu, gets towards the uh, halfway line, just been attacked by a moth. Uh, Van Dijk that'll be aid he's just got his wallet out <laughs> yeah, I noticed he didn't go and get your fish and chips here's uh, Alexander Arnold out to the right hand side Salah into the centre poked away by Anderson and then Tyree Mitchell kicks it back into the centre of the penalty area it was poor from him out wide it goes back into the centre looking for Robertson it's Darwin Nunes trying to connect away by the Cure is getting back Ayu is getting back and chipped it out and away for a throw in but once again, Palace looking shaky. And, and once again, it's Trent Alexander-Arnold who twice creates the chances. I don't know how many times it can happen before Patrick Vieira does something about it. It's, it's Diaz into Nunez. Lovely ball out wide to Salah. Back into the centre. He comes now, travelling to the edge of the area. It's Alexander-Arnold picked into the air by Gurry. Goalkeeper comes, hesitates, doesn't get there. Comes back out to Robertson. Edge of the D is Elliot. Squares it for Fabinho, gives it away. They look to escape Palace, but they don't get any further than halfway inside their own half before Liverpool come back again. Phillips out to Alexander-Arnold, another cross. Dealt with this time by Anderson. Headed out to the far side. It's out for a throw, and the Palace defence quickly gulp in a little bit of oxygen before again Liverpool look to try and pounce with another attack. Elliot 
just in from the touchline right side looking for Alexander Arnold possibly but goes inside to Fabinho instead then on to Milner who gets it to Alexander Arnold they're not getting tidy enough to him he pulls it back Salah just wide of the left hand up right well on any other day you would have thought that that would have been 1-0 they're waiting to get beat it's a matter of time they cannot he's got his arms in the air Patrick Vieira on the, Vieira on the touchline no point putting your arms in the air shrugging your shoulders you need to give instruction of what your players are doing wrong and Eze is the one who's not tracking Trent he's not staying with him he's not switched on it's like he's completely unaware of his defensive duties and if he keeps playing like that they're going to lose and so far in the game 74% possession for Liverpool six shots on goal one on target one corner Crystal Palace have had 26% of the ball they haven't had any of the above they are on the back foot this Palace defence do know how to dig out a clean sheet they ended the last campaign with a run of clean sheets but that has already been tested by the dizzying talents of Salah, Nunez, Diaz and Alexander-Arnold over the course of the first 23 minutes of this game and so far they have not been breached here is Van Dijk down the left he goes looking to feed Milner across comes Ayu slides the ball out of play and it goes out into the technical area and quickly Robertson takes a throw looking for Diaz who goes down by the byline gets to the corner flag and lovely reverse into Milner space for Fabinho if they want to work it back to him but Diaz fancies his chances of travelling with it instead infield to Virgil van Dijk who's encouraged to shoot he might you know he does and it veers away from the left hand upright and into the Anfield Road stand and it's away for a goal kick away to our left hand side I mean he's pretty good but it'd have to be magnificent to score from there yeah it was a, it was a bit high tariff he should have just been feeding the ball out to the right but to Trent again that's where the goal is going to come from Crystal Palace trying to play, it, play out from the back almost got caught Manchester United style they have given the ball away cheaply inside their own half as he's gone down thinking that he was fouled the referee's not having any of it Patrick Vieira flustered on the touchline as Salah chases again down the right keeps the ball in by the byline produces a cross with the outside of his boot headed away by Anderson out to the far side Salah's first to it Crystal Palace are napping the ball's towards the far post Milner heads it down into the six yard box but there's no one to capitalise well, it, they it, are being probed and pressed and prodded in all different directions they are but uh, they're not helping themselves I mean Eze turned his back there it sounds like I'm on, the, on a mission against Eze because I'm a big fan of him normally but he does not look at the races Gurhi trying to slide it forward for Eze again it goes past him past Zaha and into the feet of Allison away to our right hand side and again Liverpool just turn the tables and start to build once more you're listening to Talk Sport we're live at Anfield on game night Monday night football on the radio free of charge and available every time there's a Premier League game at this time in the schedule it's Liverpool nil, Palace nil. on Talk Sport with Car Finance 24-7 search Car Finance 24-7 today I mean, Crystal Palace just giving the ball away so cheaply once again. Liverpool quick free kick given away. Elliot won it back before Eze had even thought about passing it. Here is Fabinho, just short of the centre circle. Clipping it wide to the right, headed away by Mitchell. Drops in midfield for Eze, who's engaged by Milner. That white kid of Crystal Palace so far. Not muddied too much. They've hardly had to touch the ball. Here's Nunez. Lovely touch to try and take it past uh, Schlup. Schlup then brings him down free kick. Lovely touch, wasn't it, from Nunez? Looks like he's making himself at home, Danny. Nice and sharp. Mixing his game up, we talked about that earlier. Coming to feet, spinning in behind. Not giving the defenders a minute's break when, he's, when they've got the ball as well. Here is... Uh, Robertson coming forward on to Luis Diaz a little flick into Milner who just body swears finds Elliot then Nunez trying to turn comes back to Elliot inside the box Klein has to react emergency action and he smashes it out as he swivels and gets it out of the penalty area and away for a throw but Liverpool don't pause for a beat before they come again Robertson testing Klein once more he dives in the former Liverpool player and pokes it out down by the corner flag Elliot again looking to get himself in the box with late runs 
little flicks and little blindside runs trying to get himself in good positions to score goals and make things happen exactly what we wanted him to do backed away by Ward towards the edge of the penalty area it goes it drops on the head of Eze but he sends it backwards rather than forwards Elliot gets there ahead of Eze again just sharper and quicker and he's got the ball once more and he quickly shifts it on to the right Salah into the box and Nunez who is being engaged from behind by Anderson it's won by Palace they quickly try to release Zaha but Nat Phillips covers the ground very well didn't actually manage to turn and put it upfield puts it straight out of play but he did well enough to stop any threat from the Ivorian a ripple of applause for uh, Joe That's Gomez from is coming out on this near side here is Klein at the other end ball into the box steered away by uh, Liverpool defence Milner gets it back to his goalkeeper who's hacked clear upfield quickly on Diaz putting the press on Ward and then Nunez is there slides in through the back of Anderson Nunez no sympathy just drops down to his knees smacks him on the backside and says come on get up this is a game again good application to try and win the ball back wasn't it Anderson thought he had a second on the ball he didn't well his passing range was a feature of the yeah. first weekend of the season his laser guided precision balls from deep inside his own half to the left and right flanks out Fox Arsenal and I was expecting to see him toss the ball in behind Trent Alexander-Arnold on a number of occasions today I don't think he's managed to complete a pass yet Eze takes the free kick it's midway inside the Liverpool half wide on the right it's sent back into the centre circle for Mitchell to send it long it bounces inside the Liverpool box it's loose it's away by Phillips and Liverpool have got a man advantage here as they look to break on the halfway line and Klein stopped them from doing that and it was absolutely vital that he did so he was. because Liverpool had four on two <laughs> Elliot on the left lovely ball in field to Alexander Arnold who's wandered into a midfield position then reversed the ball into the box Salah with a header saved down low by Guaita who drops gathers and pulls it into his body it's the first shot on target for Mo Salah in the game what a pass from Trent Alexander Arnold again drifting in where he likes time on the ball head up like a quarterback picking out the runners he's been absolutely sensational going forward Eze again nowhere near him no plan to stop him from Vieira I do not, I cannot believe what I'm watching from a tactical point of view. I'm absolutely gobsmacked as to what they're trying to do. Because he's absolutely right, um, dictating play and running the game from right back. So if you're Patrick Vieira, what do you do? I'm telling Eze, stand on him and don't leave him. But wherever he goes on the field, man mark Defensively, yeah. Until, until you get the ball and then go and do what you do. And if you're not on him, then there's a job for Mitchell to do. And then Gahey goes over to the Zaha. Where's the plan in what they were doing? You know what he's going to do, and they're not, they're not stopping it. It's like they've, no, they've not set up a plan to stop Trent dictating play and playing balls in behind. It's, uh, it's one of the most fascinating things I've seen. This, well, I mean, we've only two weekends in, but it's bizarre. I've never, see, I've never seen Palace play like this. Eight shots on goal. I think probably Trent Alexander-Arnold's got three expected goal assists already ball has been sent up towards Nunez who's engaged in the battle with Ward which uh, he thought he was going to get a free kick for he didn't and it's eventually broken down at the feet of Diaz and then it's picked up by Ducure the new signing from Lens but Diaz has chased him won the ball back and Liverpool have possession on the halfway line they turn it over now in transition they look to break quickly but Palace have got numbers back here so they take their time find Alexander Arnold then go right in the centre circle to Elliott and then look to build again. 30 minutes play, no goals so far in the game, but Liverpool have been supremely dominant, and Palace have been on the back foot. They're sticking in the game, though. And uh, Patrick Vieira can at least be pleased that they haven't been breached, although I think he is absolutely furious about the way that they have played in the opening half an hour. But to get through it without conceding is probably a minor positive. Ball down the right for Elliot. I don't think it will last too long if it continues like this. A little no reverse chance. ball into Salah. Into the box, tricking his way past two challenges. And then a third. It breaks loose inside the area. Milner is chasing back to the goalkeeper. Has to deal with it with his feet. He manages to clear up to That's Eze. It. Skips past one challenge. And now a chance to release. on. Release Zaha. I thought he was off. He's charging into the box though. He's taking on the goalkeeper. And he slots into the far corner. And he thinks he's put Crystal Palace in front on the break breakaway. Eze's ball through the centre of the Liverpool half. Zaha went racing through 
The question will be asked, was he onside or offside? Aye. It's incredibly tight, but so was the finish. Supreme, accurate, precision pass. Alison Becker and into the net. And Palace lead by goal to nil. He's on. It's the first bit of magic we've seen from Eze when he's got the ball. I've been critical of him without the ball for obvious reasons. But with the ball, that's what he's capable of. Great bit of skill. Can you play the pass at the right time? We talked about it before the game. In behind Nat Phillips, that space. Can you get Zara in the space behind him? Yes, they can. Their first counter, their first chance, really. Can he finish? We know he can do that. We'll talk about um, a shock. Well, Wilfred Zaha scored five goals in pre-season. He had his best goal-scoring season last campaign with 15, 14 of those in the Premier League. And actually, if you go back to the end of last season, he's in a pretty good goal-scoring run. That's his 10th goal in his last 17 matches. And that was some finish, finish from Wilfred Zaha. And it was that left channel in between Phillips and Trent Alexander-Arnold, yeah. which... Crystal Palace looked to expose. They did it for the first time and uh, released Zaha. And it looks as if he's put them in front. We've had no any, any sort of discussion about VAR check, so I'm guessing that it's all been okay. Looks like Mitchell's got a problem the left back with his hamstring. But they're going to get opportunity, Sam, to do that on the counter because of how high Liverpool press and how high Liverpool play. The problem is not that, because you can wait for your counters and try and hit them on the break. It's when they haven't got the ball, they have to press the players who are the most creative for Liverpool instead of dropping off and just condensing space and allowing Trent Alexander-Arnold to do what he's done. The thing is for Liverpool now not to panic, keep doing what you were doing. The chances have come, they've had some good, they've got themselves in some brilliant opportunities, uh, some, some great situations in the box. Well, it's the sixth Premier League game in a row that Liverpool conceded the first goal. I did mention it earlier on. It's been a bit of a habit, a habit I'm sure that uh, Jurgen Klopp will want them to get out of. Indeed he will. Palace only won four times on their travels in the league last season, but they did win at Manchester City. They are very good at bloodying the nose of the big boys. Here's Darwin Nunez. Over on the right, a right-footed drive, which is off target and going three yards wide of the goal. And uh, Liverpool have got to be a little bit cute in the way that they respond to this. No help for Lever, no rushing chances. They've created enough in this game to they be have. two or three up already. Yeah, there's been some glass-ditch defending, there's a couple of poor finishes, but they've created plenty, you're right. They don't panic, we've seen this Liverpool side many times come from a goal down, especially at Anfield. They have to be very careful of that counter though, because we talked about that gap behind Phillips and that the fact that Trent plays so high and leaves him isolated. When they do get a turnover, they have got space. Ball is on the halfway line, Crystal Palace who lead by Golton Hill, have it. Another on the right, Klein trying to get it forward, away comes... Uh, Diaz with the ball, there's a little fight for it, Ayu thinks he's been fouled, the referee wants to play on, Fabinho's nabbed it, and then it's played back into the left fullback area, and Robertson tracking back will get there first, ahead of Zaha, the goal scorer. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one on talk score, the first goal on game night, scored by Wilfred Zaha of Crystal Palace. <coughs> Salah. Fighting with Gurhi for the ball, over on the far side, he takes a trip towards the edge of the penalty area and then plays in Trent Alexander-Arnold. Alexander-Arnold looking to shoot from distance, it gets a cannon then comes back to him so he tries it again. Plays it forward to Darwin Nunez who can't get hold of the ball. He's still fighting for it, gets back and then Ward dives in, volleys the ball away. But he is a swashbuckling forward, Darwin Nunez, in the thick of the action all the way through. Fabinho back into the centre circle Phillips looking forward for Liverpool trying to equalise here Elliot right side back in field of Phillips once more everybody inside the Palace half of the field not a great pass from Phillips intercepted by Schlupp finds Eze Excellent. looks to release Zaha he does that with the outside of his boot now they start to charge forward and they have got numbers up including Ayu and Decore who's got to the edge of the box and he's driven a shot goalwards which is flying into the cop 
And it's away for a goal kick away Do to You know what, line. Sam Eze was not happy with Zara there. He was in. If he had the courage to try and play that little clever pass again, similar to the one we've just seen inside the inside right position, just down the bit behind uh, Nat Phillips, he could have been in there. But again, good breakaway, better from Palace. And they've won it again, and it's Zaha running at Phillips, getting to the edge of the area, shooting at Allison, who allows himself just to drop down to the floor and pick it up because it was a bit of a daisy cutter from uh, Zaha. But it's a couple of shots on target now that. Wilfred Zaha has had and Liverpool have to be a little bit careful Nunez into the box he goes barged over by Anderson wants a free kick not going to get one Anderson the Dane brings it clear flicked into the air headed down by Klein away by Anderson in the right fullback position but Elliot is going to take it out of the sky with supreme arrogance bringing it down beautifully and tucking it back into Elliot it's lifted over the top towards Alexander-Arnold who looks for Diaz who's fighting with Anderson and it's cleared out towards the near side and then there was Robertson engaging with Ayu but he's won the ball fairly according to Paul Tierney back to Milner who's crossed into the box he's aimed towards Darwin Nearly. Nunez but Nunez maybe just uh, a little bit too far away from it oh, Alexander Arnold again winning the ball and then there was a foul surely over on the far side by Mitchell referee says play on that hamstring seems to have healed and it's a bit chaotic again from Crystal Palace who bring it to the halfway line Good chance for uh, Milner to get the ball into the box. Just got it too close to the goalkeeper. Yeah, but worth the risk from that angle, especially when you've got Nunez in there with his burial presence. You're getting in those wide areas, you've got to put the ball in there. They have plenty of numbers in the box. Just keep doing what they're doing. Keep getting into those dangerous areas and try and improve that little final pass at the end of it or the finish. Decision when to shoot, when to dummy, when to pass. All those little things that count in the final third. And turn forward there by... Uh, Alexander Arnold and cut out easily by Schlup. Immediately Elliot applies pressure over on the far side and it goes out of play. And Vieira did say his priority would be not conceding a goal, but he wasn't coming here to defend for 90 minutes. We have to play our game, we have to try and create chances, we have to try and score goals. They've done that. They're first of the season, scored at Anfield. They lead by a goal to nil. Diaz for Liverpool on the attack on the left now in those blood red jerseys and then he loses out to Ayu and uh, Zahar is away again but he's got five for company it might have been a foul yeah it was by Diaz and that's going to be a yellow card for him <laughs> a lot of questions about him in the pre-match press conference Jurgen Klopp not willing to indulge in any sort of uh, speculation about his underperformance in the early part of this season after such a brilliant start to his Liverpool career. A little slip by Diaz as he almost intervened after a heady heavy touch from Joel Ward. In. Lovely ball by Decore into Zaha again. Alisson is out very quickly, smothers it, turns it round and out for a corner, the first of the game to Crystal Palace. Well, Zaha's causing Phillips problems. Again, he's in with a slide pass. It was an easy move. Tries to he breathes, he's onside and a better touch from Zara in that inside right position and he's, he's one on one with the keeper he's got to do better there it's a sloppy touch for a player of his quality allows Allison out could have been two probably should have been it's a great chance for Zaha to double Crystal Palace's lead they lead by goal to nil five minutes before the break Allison trying to organise his defence Eze to take the corner Zaha has drifted out for a short one on this near side there's five white shirts in the box it's aimed in towards the near post away by Nat Phillips and then Zah Salah manages to break, bring it down but it ricochets off uh, the Egyptian and is eventually cleared away by Palace all the way through to Allison. 1-0 to Palace and Anfield and uh, Liverpool can't afford to drop more points it would be a worse their worst start to the season if they didn't win today in 10 years Milner looking for Nunez again Anderson who's been a very good defender for Crystal Palace ever since joining manages to clear the ball out to the far side and then Gerhi and Mitchell do well far touch line ball goes out of play it's away for a throw in We're heading up to uh, half time and uh, Jurgen Klopp has sent Jordan Henderson and Kostas Simikas already out on this near side to warm up. 
think he'll be thinking about making too many changes at half time five substitutes does allow you to do pretty much what you want now his concern will be Phillips he's the one getting uh, getting the most problems from Zaha on the pace running in behind he's, he's the one who's looking the most vulnerable in the back line so if Gomez has got half a game in him with his pace he might be thinking about that other than that no they've made chances you know you don't panic the best teams never panic by going a goal down they keep doing what they know they're good at keep probing keep pressing and rely on your quality in attacking areas to get you back in the game especially going cop end second half of course as well currently Liverpool nil Crystal Palace won and for the latest odds you can head to Ladbrokes where right now Liverpool still pretty big favourites uh, 10 to 7 on to win the game and uh, Crystal Palace 9 to 2 uh, but they lead by a goal to nil the draw is 9 to 4 it's all thanks to Ladbrokes play at Ladbrokes.com 18 plus big gambler word at all it's with Robertson for Liverpool looking to try and respond to that stunning counter-attacking goal from Crystal Palace Alexander-Arnold down the wide right in towards Elliot from the near touch line it's a little bit of a fumble by Kweiter and put behind by Anderson after Salah had played the ball into the box looking for Elliot whose header was spilt by Kweiter Anderson then took no chances and put it out for a corner well again it's Trent, right back, right midfield area, sliding the ball down the channel for Salah to run into, he's not tracked, he gets a cross in and that man Elliot getting in the box again, really desperately trying to have an impact on this game, been one of Liverpool's brightest sparks in the first half. Here is the corner taken from the far side, it's Alexander-Arnold into the centre, headed away, Elliot trying to win it, tracking back to do so, goes back into the centre circle, Robertson keeps it moving, for Liverpool who are behind here with less than 90 seconds of the first half remaining on talk sport Fabinho being tracked by Ayu and it's all the way through to Alisson back to the left it goes and now it's on up to the halfway line Robertson the Scott onto Milner who flicks it round the corner blocked by Gerhies come further out towards this near side and Ward is almost now over on the left keeping an eye on Salah as the ball has been played out towards the right touchline as Liverpool look at it midway inside Palace territory Alexander-Arnold tiptoeing into the midfield playing it square to Fabinho a little bit slow now from Liverpool because Crystal Palace can sit back and try and defend this lead that they've been given by Wilfred Zaha here is uh, Phillips Elliot back to Phillips again and then into Fabinho Palace backing up on the edge of their own 18-yard box and then with another four in front of that five, Salah's trying to trick his way through, engages with Eze, gives it to Alexander-Arnold, back into Salah, edge of the box, little drag back, tries to get past Schlupp who just turns inside the area and hacks it clear. It's unlucky from Liverpool, I like that, nice and patient, probing again, good defending from Palace. Three minutes of additional time at the end of the first 45. Phillips down the right, looking for Robertson, who's made another intelligent run, didn't quite work out for him and it's cleared away towards the halfway line Van Dijk on to Alexander-Arnold wide on the right is Elliot again back into Alexander-Arnold Fabinho standing still engaged by two from behind he gives it back to Alexander-Arnold and Liverpool just running out of ideas here just slowing the tempo of the game down being patient Phillips finds Elliot and that's not a great ball but he wins it back tenaciously Cross comes Schlupp, kicks it clear, it's out over on the far side. Well, it has been a first half in which Liverpool will feel disappointed they didn't get on the score sheet, yes. Danny, especially with the firepower they've got. Yeah, and, and also the great area, the great positions they've got themselves in in the final third. There's been a couple of good chances where you'd expect them to score. Uh, Nunez at the back post, obviously, the one where Harvey Elliott dummied one or two, sat them down and then didn't quite put away the chance. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall they'll be disappointed and I think it's just a case of not making sure you channel that disappointment into more energy and more um, chances in the second half. You know, you know you're going to get the ball, plenty of the ball and you know you're going to get more chances, but especially when you're shooting towards the cop in the second half. There's an inevitability about that, I don't feel. Bit of breaking news for you. Talksport understands that Manchester United are closing in on Matthias Cunha from Atletico Madrid for 50 million euros 23 years of age a young winger stroke striker attacking midfield player played in the Bundesliga for Hertha Berlin the mighty Hertha, Hertha Berlin 
Here's uh, Alexander Arnold again on the right hand side. We'll have more on that at half time. Swinging the ball in, cleared away by Anderson. Up to the halfway it goes. Alexander Arnold trying to trip the ball in behind Klein, but Klein heads it cross field to Ward, who hooks it up over the halfway line. Van Dyke manages to send it forward. Ayu's got three around him. Robertson is one of those. Lovely trick to get out of a tight spot, and Liverpool look to build again this is Alexander Arnold lovely ball down the right hand side Salah racing to get there across comes Gurhi brilliant side tackle on the cover out for a corner right at the end of the first half what more can you say about Trent Alexander Arnold that hasn't already been said it's it's brilliant to watch such a wonderful passer of the ball do what he does but it's incredibly bizarre for me to watch from a defensive point of view and to watch a coach not try and stop it corner far side Alexander Arnold sends it in towards Phillips heads it down and it's away by Anderson on the edge of the six yard box he's coming back again Elliot turns it back down the left and Nunez is there he chests it down he shoots towards the far corner it hits the post comes back off Salah then Van Dijk slips inside the area foul. and there might have been a foul in there anyway but Kreiter walks over to his post gives it a little tap to say thank you because Darwin Nunez so close to opening his account I think he might have mishit it Sam just a little bit he scuffed at it didn't he and it hooked over the top of Anderson and rolled towards the goal bounced and spun towards the post great ball from Harvey Elliott nice touch to be fair the defender gets back in doesn't he just as he's about to shoot I'm not sure if he comes off the defender well it is half time and Liverpool have had a couple of big chances Nunez right at the end Salah with a header from a Trent ball he's been magnificent in that first 45 Milner had a chance in the first two minutes he really should have scored but Liverpool behind at half time to a Crystal Palace counter-attacking goal scored by Wilfried Zaha the Reds haven't lost their first home game of the season for 21 years but Crystal Palace are the kind of opposition that can sometimes trouble the big boys at half time Liverpool nil Palace won I don't think we should be surprised Adrian that Palace are holding their own this is the team that took 14 points against the top six sides last season only Liverpool themselves and Manchester City took more Jurgen Klopp would plead patience no doubt about it three of the six goals that Liverpool scored against the Eagles last season came after the 78th minute no changes at half time Paul Tierney gets things started Liverpool start with intent they pass forward from the kickoff in red shirts red shorts red socks it's white white and white for Crystal Palace with a very small snazzy red and blue stripe right down the middle of their jersey they are attacking their supporters in the Anfield Road end away to our left it means that Liverpool retain the starting 11 with Alisson in goal Trent Alexander-Arnold Phillips Van Dijk and Robertson Elliot Fabinho and Milner Salah Nunez and Diaz who's been booked and Crystal Palace retain Guaita a back five of Klein Ward Anderson Gurhi and Mitchell Dekure Eze and Schnupp and Zaha and Ayu up top although very much it was Eze and Ayu supporting Zaha in that first half as he was the spearhead of the Palace attack it is 1-0 to Crystal Palace and Liverpool who have won the last 10 Premier League meetings between these two scoring 30 goals and conceding just six need to find a couple of goals from somewhere otherwise it's their worst start to a season in a decade here is Eze being hounded by Elliot and Milner he was tugged back and a free kick is given on the left hand side as Crystal Palace look at it what would Jurgen Klopp have said for his team to go out and do straight away go after the ball win it back keep the energy up high tempo wear them down keep doing what you're doing keep making chances but be careful on the counters I think it, I'd, have, I'd have been asking Fabinho to stay with his centre arse a little bit more when Liverpool are attacking and let the others get on with it Luis Diaz chips it down the left looking for Darwin Nunez and uh, those two not necessarily as well connected as Salah and Nunez seem to be in that first 45 minutes it drifts out of play and it's away for a Crystal Palace throw Crystal Palace lead by a goal to nil Crystal Palace have conceded more Premier League goals against Liverpool than any other club 
and they lost both of their meetings with Jurgen Klopp's side last season and they're in front here looking to win for the first time since 2017 what's happened over on the far side Joe Ward I think has got blood on his jersey has he or is he uh, being spoken to by Paul Tierney throwing the ball away taking his time maybe either way we're back underway and Van Dijk hands off uh, Zaha who's trying to manhandle him as the ball runs into the penalty area Van Dijk just gives him a little glance and the ball runs behind and away for a goal kick 1-0 to Palace here is Nat Phillips striding forward with the ball at his feet meets Schlupp passes it right into Alexander-Arnold on the centre circle the ball is thrust forward by Fabinho who looks for the movement of Darwin Nunes in behind doesn't get his first shot on target tees it back off towards uh, Salah there's a half a claim for a handball but the referee says play on Elliot comes forward he didn't look confident there did he Darwin Nunez as he went in behind something certainly happened was there a handball decision no. my, my good feeling is he should have scored irrelevant of a handball he took too long it was a good pull from uh, Salah Eze again wriggling away from Elliot moves up into the penalty area tries to get a return off Tariq Mitchell it's away by Fabinho and cleared up towards the halfway line Alexander Arnold sends it long chasing his Diaz Guaita is going to get there just about falls over as he did so he's out of his goal now Robertson is looking at trying to strike from some way out just in front of the halfway line he doesn't get past the midfield Dekure blocks it and Palace guide it back to the edge of their own penalty area away by Ward up over the halfway line it goes Robertson engages again there's a wrestling match between him and Ayu they come face to face nose to nose referee Tierney goes across but Van Dijk's already sorted it out no he hits his chair he missed it and then he has tried to take it on his left foot didn't set himself his first touch it was they let him down he ended up running round it onto his weak foot he's in on goal Nunez he should score it's a great run and a great pass will be a little link up with uh, Salah again he'll be disappointed with that because he knows he can finish those situations more often than not uh, he's got a lot of goals last year did Darwin Nunez 32 in all competitions 26 league goals in Portugal in 28 matches he should have scored that he'll, he'll be disappointed lent to his right didn't he yeah. just never looked completely set to me exactly that and uh, he has uh, fudged a chance it's his best chance that of the evening it remains 1-0 the Crystal Palace Nunez fighting with Anderson for the ball he was being manhandled there referee has allowed things to go quite a lot tonight that's been the theme of the weekend you may have noticed I like that theme here comes Diaz, out towards the left-hand side. He saw Joel Ward coming at pace and had to play it quickly. And as a result of that, Robertson couldn't get up on the outside quick enough. It goes out of play and away for a throw-in. Halfway inside Crystal Palace territory. The uh, light here is completely gone. And it's just the floodlights that are providing the illumination now. And running down the right-hand side under those floodlights is Zaha. He runs into Phillips, gets pushed to the floor. Referee again allows it to continue. Goes back towards Allison, who inside his six-yard box hammers it up towards the halfway line. Mitchell with a header. Drops into the chest of Fabinho, who didn't see in his wing mirrors that Zaha was coming from behind, but he got away with it. And now Liverpool build down the left. 51 on the clock, 1-0 Palace. Ball wide left with Luis Diaz. Diaz back towards Milner. Milner strokes it into Nunez. He's pulled back. He's poor. And it goes out towards the far side. No Roberto Firmino today. He's not in the match day squad. Nunez chasing around, trying to stay relevant at the moment. I think he's a bit frustrated with the chances that he's missed so far tonight. He's missed two half chances for uh, Liverpool and one really good one. I think we'll see Carvalho at some stage super talent um, score a goal Fabio Carvalho did get 11 goals last season yeah. for Fulham in the championship Van Dijk just left through the centre circle plays it on to Phillips Phillips sends it wide right now Alexander-Arnold who's had a little bit more attention in the second half than he had in the first 52 on the clock Phillips Alexander-Arnold Liverpool trying to find a way through 
Jose was closer to Alexander-Arnold on that occasion. Phillips has then stumbled and then he's gone driving into a tackle with Schluff and he's won the ball. But Jose's picked it up and sent it out to the far side. Ayu couldn't control it. Takes a couple of touches and then holds the ball up on the edge of the penalty area. Dukuri sends it back again. The far post, Zahar is waiting. The cross is blocked by Robertson. Kept over on the far side by Palace and then picked up by Schlupp who sends it but is intercepted by Alexander-Arnold who couldn't get his ball forward enough quickly to Nunez. It breaks down and Palace have got it back again. It was a good attack from Palace. Nice and patient. I was nearly in. Bit of a poor touch but much better from them. Liverpool fans getting frustrated now. Uh, breakfast uh, tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. We did tell you that Ben Foster was going to be on the breakfast show, but uh, I think he's pulled a car. So one goalie for another. You can only bring in a goalie when the goalie pulls out. So Shea Gibbon is going to be on breakfast tomorrow morning with Laura and Ali from 6 o'clock looking back on this game. Now, James Milner is unhappy about the time wasting. So is Van Dijk. Ayu won't go off the third of play to the right-hand side. He won't really go off behind the goal. Eventually, slowly, he's being pushed off over on the halfway line. But uh, Paul Tierney has not taken any notice whatsoever. I thought they were clamping down on time-wasting. That was something they told us in a Premier League briefing before the season. Well, he might be. Probably stopped his watch, no problem. The Liverpool crowd aren't seeing it like that. As Diaz tries to side the ball into the centre again. It's an interception from Anderson. There's a bit of frustration around Anfield now as Liverpool shoot towards the cop but haven't really managed to get a shot on goal in this second half. They had 17 attempts on goal in that first half. Three on target. Just three on target. But still yet to find the back of the net. It's Phillips. Come out by Decoure. Milner uh, doesn't get there. And Decoure's ball is cut out by... Phillips and out on this near side it Zaha. goes off Zaha sorry Sam Zaha's got to do better sometimes he, ro he throws his arms up in the air too often five or six times in this five five or six times in this game yes he scored a brilliant goal and he's a super talent but he could work a bit harder and keep the ball a bit better for his team sometimes instead of throwing your arms up in the air Nunez into the right channel manages to hook across into the centre of the goal it's picked up by Salah on the edge of the 18 yard box as Palace attempt to clear it's a lovely intelligent ball out wide to the left and Robertson has cantered up and picked it up sent it into the near post it's blocked by Nathaniel Klein no handball says Paul Tierney back out to Robertson again he moves into a bit of space on the edge of the box there's space wide left for Milner who's going to deliver across into the area now but it's too close again to Guaita who collects it beautifully and bowls it out to the halfway line and Palace are coming forward Budeze cutting in past Alexander-Arnold looking for that run of Zaha he's found him once again wanted the return Van Dijk says not on your Nelly fella intercepts and Liverpool have the ball again for Zaha's reaction he just lost the ball he hasn't chased it he's thrown his arms in the air it's a good break from Palace dangerous they look dangerous on the counter but your reaction's got to be better here come Liverpool once more Elliot trying to run in between two centre halves but he has to check that momentum because the ball wasn't fed to him on the halfway line Salah being pulled and pushed and harassed by Tyreek Mitchell it goes back to halfway. Virgil van Dijk clips it forward into the right channel, looking for Salah. Salah controls it well, juggles with it, turns and plays it back into Trent Alexander-Arnold, who plays it to Milner, down by the byline. Can he produce a cross? He can, but it's headed away by Anderson. It'll come back to Mo Salah, right side, Harvey Elliott on the edge of the Palace penalty area. Liverpool looking for a way through. The cross comes to Diaz, an overhead kick, which was a stretch, and he really was stretching. And he connected with it, but it went out and away for a uh, goal holding, kick. Well, Darwin face. Nunez has been sent off. Red card for Darwin Nunez for an elbow into the face of Joachim Anderson. That was Paul Tierney's view of it. And on his home debut, his first full appearance for Liverpool, Darwin Nunez, who could become their record signing with add-ons, has been given a straight red card. And Liverpool's night has gone from bad to worse. Well, oh, it's head a headbutt. Butt. It's a headbutt from Darwin Nunez. He was provoked by Anderson, but there is absolutely no way that that's going to be overturned. Nope. Lost his head. It's a moment of madness. 
it's a shame for him because he's shown some great attributes tonight some great qualities probably frustrated on the chance he's missed but it's no excuse stupid emotion get the better of him well the Liverpool supporters are trying to sing his name but that is a huge huge moment in the match because one nil down and down to ten men against yeah. a team like Crystal Palace that's not great frustrated by missed chances yeah, I think so I think so Liverpool who spent 64 million pounds on Darwin Nunez have lost him in their first home game he was bumped from behind there was a little back header from him first of all there's a running battle going on between the two and then there was a push and then a headbutt yeah you, he's going to have to learn quickly because in this league you're going to get roughed up there's going to be plenty of that you can't react like that as I said before he's shown real quality tonight he's shown some great attributes in his forward play and the day he looks dangerous but um he's going to be missing now for at least three games isn't he well that is a serious serious misjudgment by uh, the uruguayan forward who started so brightly for liverpool with a goal and assist on his premier league debut but he has been sent off on his first appearance at anfield and there is still half an hour or more to go danny and now liverpool really are going to be up against it they are and it's going to be interesting to see how Palace change because they're going to have more of the ball are they going to commit men forward and try and get a second or are they just going to try and play the game out in terms of possession and they're going to have to make a change here and it looks like they're going to uh, James Milner is having a word with Ayu who's gone down cheaply Liverpool want to get the game started quickly from a goal kick position and uh, I wonder how Palace are going to deal with the situation because now obviously there's one less player for yeah. Liverpool to use in attack well through all my years of playing the philosophy you had when you uh, go to an extra man is you press everywhere and you use that extra man doesn't matter how good the team is you play and you can't sit back you have to make that extra man count and that's by going on the front foot and really going after the opposition here is uh, Matt Phillips moving up to halfway Alexander Arnold back in field to uh, Phillips again I think Joachim Anderson in fact he did Joachim Anderson got a yellow card in that exchange as well for his role in provoking Darwin Nunez Phillips brings it out of the sky towards the right it goes Liverpool unsettled and rattled here Jordan Henderson is about to come on for James Milner here is Elliot to Alexander Arnold and Liverpool have got a conundrum to solve now just got to settle a little bit not allow that to affect them they've done their best to try and integrate Darwin Nunez but that's a good ball from Phillips looking for Luis Diaz a searching run down the left hand side back it goes to Robertson now Milner with a chance to cross no big target man to aim at now for Liverpool Diaz trying to trick his way through every challenge he does that gets to the edge of the area on the edge of the D right for it oh what a goal what a finish moments after going down to 10 men an electrifying goal from Luis Diaz Liverpool level in stunning style what a finish from Luis Diaz letting fly after taking on four Crystal Palace players cutting it from the right to the centre of the penalty area back out to the D and then right footed into the corner beyond Guaita and it's Liverpool 1, Palace 1 Phenomenal goal from a super talent thought he was unlucky last week actually at Fulham came close that is a special goal what a way to lift your team when you need someone to grab the game for you when you need someone to show the quality Luis Diaz of Liverpool with a thunderous strike from the edge of the box Vicente Guaita was so far away from that he might as well have been sitting on a bench in Stanley Park 
Liverpool one, Crystal Palace one. Three substitutions for Liverpool. Rolling the dice. Robertson gone. In comes Simicas. Milner gone. In comes Henderson. And Nat Phillips' night is over as well. On comes Joe Gomez. Danny Murphy. Good substitutions, I think, from Jurgen Klopp. Gomez with his pace. Simicast Robertson looking a little bit tired. Might be carrying a knock, actually. Might have hurt himself there. Just looking at his hand, covered in blood as well. And Henderson, because Milner, of course, at his age, may be uh, feeling it a little bit. First game of the season, so Henderson's energy to come on. I think they're a good substitution from Jurgen Klopp. But what a goal. Well, I mentioned it a couple of times last season. There's not many players that hit the ground running coming into the Premier League, but Luis Diaz hit the ground sprinting. At the end of last season, he was absolutely terrific. Unfazed by the competition to get into the Liverpool team, he scored 16 goals for Porto last season. And he was very handy for Liverpool too. They've made a change. Crystal Palace, Odson Edward is on for Jordan Ayew. What he is, Sam, he's a, he's, a, he's a street footballer. He plays with courage and freedom. He doesn't worry about making mistakes. Oh, lovely back heel into Elliot. Elliot was almost fouled by uh, De Cure. He comes back on the edge of the area for Diaz again, who's twisting, turning, trying to get away from Eze. They don't get the foul. The ball breaks down. Eze is robbed a bit by Fabinho. Oh, and the referee then, after it, what seemed like several decisions going in favour of playing on and allowing things to go pulls one up for a little challenge by Fabinho I on think it was the right decision a little he from the uh, producer deck as well he's saying that he thinks it was Palace have got to be braver than they are at the moment they've got to use that extra man and play out play through a bit scared at the moment Gomez engaging with Zaha gets there Holds him off. The ball breaks towards the midpoint of the Liverpool half. They're looking to turn it round. They've been 1-0 down for such a long period in the match. They're down to 10 men, Liverpool. But you wouldn't know it. They're coming forward at pace. Well, brilliant for the first half an hour of this match, Liverpool. Absolutely stunning, but didn't score. Conceded to Wilfred Zaha's goal after 32 minutes. And it took them another half an hour to get back into the match, by which time they lost... A £64 million pound man, Darwin Nunez, to a straight red card for engaging with Joachim Anderson. A bit of dawdling by Gerhi, picked off by Luis Diaz, who seems to have come alive in the absence of he Darwin has. Nunez. It's on to Alexander-Arnold, now Henderson on the turn. Can he get it wide left? He can. Simakas skips past one challenge, runs into traffic. Across comes Odson, Edouard, and it's cleared away. Free kick given against Crystal Palace for a foul on Kostas Simikas. Remember the score, Liverpool 1, Palace 1 on TalkSport with Now Sports. Don't forget with the Now Sports, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Liverpool versus Palace live tonight for 11.99. No contract, search Now Sports. Here's Danny Murphy. What would you do from here? Well, from Palace's perspective, they are sitting off when you have an extra man you have to press you have to go after the ball and put them under pressure because you've got the extra man you can press you can press and still leave a spare defender they're not doing that Simakas standing over the ball so is uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold who leaves it for Simakas left foot across towards the far post it's too high and it drifts out of play and it's away for a goal kick and it's a bit of a waste for Liverpool See, they're still playing the same way as they were when Liverpool had 11. They don't need to do that. They can change. They can push someone up further up with Zara on press from the front. What an enjoyable encounter. What Fantastic. a perfect way to finish a mesmerising Premier League weekend. <laughs> Ball is on the far side. And it's cleared by Guaita out towards the far touchline. Simicast missed it. It's won by Fabinho. The Greek has got it again now. Liverpool fiddling around with it on halfway, but they look more composed with 10 than they did with 11. The ball is on the right with Alexander-Arnold. They're buoyed by that goal, that wonderful, electrifying moment from Luis Diaz, who jinked and 
jiggled into the box before coming out to the edge of the D and rifling the ball beyond Guaita to make it 1-1. Salah loses out to Gerhi. Alton Edouard takes control on the halfway line, plays it to the right. A run upfield by Nathaniel Klein. His cross is towards Zaha. It's behind him. Alexander Arnold is on the cover. He clears towards the far side. Luis Diaz fancies his chances against Joel Ward. Thinks he should have had a foul. The referee says play on. Comes back to Edouard inside Liverpool territory. Wide on the right. 67 on the clock. 1 1. You're listening to Talk Sport. Here on the right side, the ball once again with Odson Edouard. Trying to feather the ball into the area. It wasn't great. And then Luis. Diaz draws a foul from Joel Ward. That's going to be a yellow card. It's the first time since they've gone to uh, 10 men that Palace had actually got some numbers in the box and got a sustained attack. Currently Liverpool 1, Palace 1. And for the latest odds, you can head to Ladbrokes, where right now you can get Liverpool to win at 6-5. to five, Crystal Palace to win 11-2. to two. The draw is 11-10. to 10. It's all thanks to Ladbrokes play at ladbrooks.com there's still 22 minutes of this game to go get yep. the popcorn out what's fascinating is when you see a team sometimes play with 11 against 10 and they, and they don't dominate the game you wonder why it's amazing how many coaches don't work on this when, when you consider how many times it happens in a game Henderson with a cross field ball looking for Elliot. stooping low to head clear was Gurhi picked up by Eze midway inside his own half he's right gone away from Alexander-Arnold and Fabinho Fabinho's coming back for more, he's won it this time Elliot, Fabinho, Alexander-Arnold Liverpool in control again Gomez, centre circle is Henderson just right of him is Fabinho back to Alexander-Arnold now Henderson, lots of space left side for Sinekas to run into and he's done just that charging towards the edge of the box his cross again is too heavy and into the arms of Whiter yeah, just to elaborate on that, Sam, a lot, of, a lot of coaches will do sessions where you work on playing against 10, yeah, or playing with 10 against 11. Roy Hodgson used to love that. Yeah, we did, we did, I, I mean, in my early days at Crew Alexandra, we did it. Julio would do it sometimes, you know, you'd play 15, 20 minutes in these situations and make a plan. Yeah. I'm not sure a lot, every coach does that, to be honest with you. Because Palace at the moment look a little bit bemused on how to make their man advantage count. And it's because they're dropping off and they're not pressing the ball. Now they're trying to do it a little bit better. Yes, protect what you've got at Anfield to a degree. But when you have a man more, you can push up the pitch and put some pressure on the ball. They haven't, they don't, they haven't looked like they don't know what, what to do to make that extra man work. And that's just something you have to work on in training sometimes. Rather than think in the moment they're going to be able to adapt. Here is uh, Joe Gomez of Liverpool, up to the halfway line he goes. Klopp is pointing towards the right side where Trent Alexander-Arnold has drifted into an advanced position. Gomez out to the far side, on to Van Dijk. Van Dijk back to Gomez. 20 minutes to go for Liverpool to try and get their customary late winner. How many times did they do that during the season that they won the title? Henderson back to Van Dijk. Fabinho wants it square. He's got it now, centre circle. On to uh, Salah. Lovely little back heel. Into oh. Alexander Arnold, who's fallen over as he's gone to strike the ball towards the far corner. Sliced it into the cop. And that was a golden chance for Trent Alexander Arnold, who broke the lines, got in behind. Lovely touch by Salah. Might have been offside. There was a good chance. It started from a pass from Virgil van Dijk, I think, or Gomez in the centre-half position with no pressure on the ball. If you put pressure on the two centre-halves when they have one less play, their options are limited. It's where Palace have to change their mentality. To, otherwise, they could find themselves losing this game. Ball cleared out from the back by Crystal Palace, headed away by Henderson. Remember... Patrick Vieira said his side were not going to be intimidated by coming to Anfield. The players were supposed to be excited by the prospect of playing here. He didn't enjoy playing here. He never won in eight trips to Anfield with Arsenal. He lost in an FA Cup final against them in Cardiff as well. That was a good day. Forwards by Van Dijk into Diaz. Brings it out of the sky well. And then across comes Klein to just shut him out. Managed to get the ball out to the far side. Edward keeps it in just by the touchline inside the Palace half infield it goes um, Eze comes across little push by Van Dijk the ball breaks and it's going to be a free kick to Palace in the centre circle well, James Milner was talking this week about the need to constantly evolve the team 
He was hoping that Darwin Nunez was going to help with their development. He will. He kind of has it away by getting sent off. He sort of made a bit more of a feisty game of it. Well, he, he, well, the goals part Liverpool into life, not the sending off. Let's get that right. And it, and it's disappointing for him because it wasn't needed and it shows a lack of discipline. But we know he's got quality. He's going to add goals to this team. He's now just going to have to sit from the sidelines, learn from his mistakes, and make sure that doesn't happen again. Brentford manager Thomas Frank is on the Jim White and Simon Jordan show tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, Trevor Sinclair there as well. And uh, remember, that starts at 10 o'clock on the TalkSport app, 1089, 1053 and DAB Digital Radio. Follows the breakfast show with Ali, with Shea Given and Laura Woods hosting tomorrow morning. Liverpool 1, Palace 1 on TalkSport with Car Finance 24-7. Search Car Finance 24-7 today. As the ball is clipped forward by Guiter, it's uh, one in the halfway line by Alexander-Arnold, then given back. Alexander-Arnold now doing two jobs, he's almost like the highest man forward. And he's uh, putting pressure Brilliant. on uh, the goalkeeper Guaita, who's kicked long and over the halfway line is won by a red shirt. That's exactly what Palace should be doing to Liverpool, what Trent was doing to Palace. Pressing high, going after them, making them make mistakes. Gomez out to Harvey Elliott playing on the right side as we speak at the moment only 19 years of age going to be immersed into this team over the course of this season he would have been more last season if it hadn't been for that injury that he suffered in September here is Henderson travelling to the left looking for Simakas Simakas the Greek into Diaz Diaz back to Simakas once again 1-1 the score at Anfield with 16 minutes to go on game night live on TalkSport live and exclusive coverage from Anfield and every Monday night game is right here for free for you and we're powered by fans and straight after this game Dean Saunders and Jason Cundy will take your calls as well you can give your views on it I'll be down on the touchline with Messrs Klopp and Vieira 03717 is the number to call Salah trying to get away from Mitchell succeeds gets to the byline Mitchell recovers puts it behind it's a corner I have to say I think Liverpool have been outstanding since they've gone to 10 men they've controlled the tempo of the game they've worked the ball well they've been courageous in the press really good 1-1 one, one. 15 to go Here's the corner to be taken by Simicass in towards the near post, flicked away by Odson Edward and retrieved by Zaha who skips in past Alexander Arnold and it's now three on four, but it's brilliant work from Luis Diaz once again. Phenomenal. Excellent work to track back and now he's got the ball, he's attacking the Palace defence. He moves it out to the left. Henderson takes over. Infield to Fabinho. Back to Henderson again. Looking for an angle for a pass. Out square to Gomez, then wider to Elliot. Elliot back centrally. Fabinho's got a bit of space now. He looks up. Salah wants the ball. Henderson's gone forward. Elliot stayed wide. He goes back to halfway. Where's Trent Alexander Arnold? Oh, he's in the middle of the park. <laughs> the intensity of Diaz is run back to try and get the ball back for his team then should be a shining example Gomez down the right into Salah's feet Salah's got Alexander-Arnold in the area but he plays it behind him it's away by the Palace defence Anderson to Eze Eze wriggling away from Elliot and playing it straight out of play and Liverpool's intensity passion pressing ability with 10 men has been simply superb it has Fabinho out to the right to the left hand side sorry and Simicas and then back into Fabinho once again 14 minutes to go the big clock which uh, is angled on uh, the corner of the stand away to our right hand side so 76 minutes and 7 seconds and it reads Liverpool 1 Palace 1 that's a loose ball by Salah, inviting a challenge from Edouard, but Liverpool won it back again, and now Van Dijk's got a bit of space. He runs into the Palace half. In the centre, to the left, and now Diaz. Diaz has got two for company. He hands it off to Van Dijk. Back centrally it goes to Gomez. Liverpool dominating possession, despite the fact that they have got one less player as a result of the sending off to... Uh, ball. Nunez, the ball by Henderson towards Diaz can't be controlled it floats out of play and it's away for a goal kick but the idea was right I think one of the things stopping Palace coming out and pressing is fear they've got something they've worked hard for this point now 
and they're going to be scared to risk that point by get, stepping out on the front foot to try and go and win the game but actually with the extra man by going to, to press and going higher up the pitch you take pressure off yourself but I do understand their dilemma and why they get into that mindset of dropping off Mitchell down the left hand side looking for a cross away by Van Dyke. Liverpool can't afford to invite any more pressure it might come with Palace having an extra man Eze on the edge of the box trying to trick his way through Decore now with a low cross back post to Zaha it's a golden miss from Wilfred Zaha to steal three points at Anfield he dives in inside the six yard box he doesn't connect he should have scored he hasn't it's still 1-1 and Anfield breathes a sigh of relief good play from Palace nice patient build up to brilliant ball in he takes it with the wrong foot Zaha lets the ball run across him tries to take it on the far post with the outside of his right foot if he steadies himself and side foots it calmly with his left they're 2-1 up it's a poor miss for a player of his quality he's gone with the wrong foot the harder technique strange choice really just set yourself and let it hit the paces on the ball can let it hit the inside of your left foot on that back post lunging at it with the outside of his right it's a let off for Liverpool Milivojevic is on for Eberici Eze and Chris Richards coming on for Mitchell Will Hughes on for Decore as Palace make another change more live commentary from the Premier League for you on Saturday Tottenham take on Wolves with Reshman Clive and Scott Minto then we're round the grounds after that Crystal Palace Aston Villa is live on TalkSport 2 at 3 Fabio Carvalho is on in an aggressive change for Liverpool and he uh, has come on in the last few seconds I didn't quite see oh Harvey Elliott's gone off yes Carvalho who is a delicious little player he, he is great word he uh, came on in the charity shield the community shield actually and uh, actually his work really got Liverpool back on the front foot again after coming off the bench combined with Nunez here is Simakas down the left hand side running at the uh, Palace defence Chris Richards is on and he's trying to defend the cross it goes to the back post away by Gerhi he's been good Gerhi been really good had to be especially there when he had to get in front of Salah Liverpool coming forward again here is H Henderson inside the centre circle 10 minutes to go now for Liverpool Trent Alexander-Arnold brings it down he sends it forward looking for Diaz he's being wrestled surely the referee will be glancing towards that he didn't think he was being held enough to give a penalty kick but it did look as if he was being frustrated no, the referees allowed play on Gomez onto the edge of the area Salah trying to wriggle free he plays it left there's space here for Simakas on the edge of the area Carvalho is screaming for it didn't get it hesitated too long there Simakas and now Henderson tries to progress it from the middle of the pitch and Trent Alexander-Arnold is stealing in behind but Anderson is aware of that and puts it clear out to the far side picked up by Henderson again into the 81st minute live on Talk Sport Liverpool won Crystal Palace won time ticking away made, oh. a, made a difference Henderson has he's injecting some urgency into the midfield and Salah thought he was fouled again by Anderson again the referee said no and the ball goes out to the far side and here comes a counter attack and Odson Edouard is on the ball and Zaha wants it oh, will he yeah. get another chance not with a touch like that he won't it's a dreadful touch from the Ivorian why hasn't he hit that good play from Edouard down the right pulls it into Zaha who just doesn't doesn't let fly for some bizarre reason I mean he might have tired legs to be fair to him but no excuse he should have put his foot through that it was a wasted opportunity that's two in the last few minutes Liverpool have Manchester United next do you want to go to that? why not? yeah let's do that next Monday night live on Talk Sport kicks off at 8 o'clock we're on air from 6 we might invite our mate Stuart round as well for a chat during that match Adrian will lead our team and we'll be there from 6 o'clock Old Trafford on a big night for both Jurgen Klopp and for Eric Ten Hag still don't understand why Zaha hasn't hit that 
Anderson just being looked at uh, by uh, our no. television friends for holding Luis Diaz. Anything in that? No. Not enough. Fabinho into Carvalho and then swept to the left. And now a bit more space for Simicas once again. He plays it infield to Carvalho, who's being harassed by Luka Milivojevic. And then Simicas tries to go through the legs of Chris Richards. There was a foul on Carvalho, who turns around to the Liverpool crowd and asks them to get up. Get behind the team. Let's suck this ball into the cop. That seems to be the message from Fabio Carvalho, the 19-year-old Portuguese. It's his home debut as well. Didn't mind telling everybody to get behind the team. Did you do that on your home debut? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the cross from Simakas in towards the penalty spot. It's headed away by Chris Richards, formerly of Bayern Munich, now of Palace. It's played to Gomez, who tries to turn midfield into Carvalho, then Henderson. Henderson with nowhere to go, really, but he's now looking for a pass for Simakas. He couldn't thread that through. He could. I thought he should have taken the risk. Here is Fabinho trying to switch the play to the left-hand side. Might reach Simakas this time. It does. Back into Carvalho inside the box. Little turn. He's got space to open up the pitch now. Diaz tries to play it around the corner. Doesn't get it back to Carvalho. And it's all the way back through to the goalkeeper. Still 1-1. Immediately dispatched upfield by Guaita. Looking for Zaha. But Joe Gomez, who has looked quite accomplished since coming off the yeah. bench. Tied is up. Six and a half to go. Can Palace hold on to this point? It would be a precious point for Patrick Vieira. Another chance to bloody the noses of the big boys. Remember, only Liverpool and Manchester City got more points away at the top six than Patrick Vieira's team last year. They are adept at causing the historic elite problems. They might feel as if they should have won here for the first time since 2017 with a man advantage for well over half an hour. Well, they've had a couple of great chances since they've had the man advantage. Um, but it's, uh, you'd have to say since the uh, sending off, Liverpool have dominated possession. They've been the ones in control of the game and, and coped with it really, really well. Gomez Square, Henderson. Look at the space for Simakas, far side play a bit behind him so he has to adjust his body position before running to the edge of the box again his cross is too big and it's going to go straight out of play and away for a goal kick away to our right hand side and you know, Klopp comes out to the edge of his technical area Patrick Vieira is not confined by that technical area he hasn't been all game he's been up and down that touch line like he was running the line and he's on the halfway line now almost on the pitch wanting to get involved he wants his team to drag a point from this game Craig Forson is the fourth official he's standing in close proximity Liverpool pressing as Palace look to play out from the back not great from Crystal Palace and Liverpool have got it back again offside, offside. Salah though from Henderson's pass I'll tell you what for, for Zaha's threats and all his ability if he watched a video of Louis Diaz work ethic off the ball tonight and copied that it would bring his game on tenfold because he's such a threat when he's got the ball he's got pace he's got good feet he can score you know, he gets himself in such wonderful positions. If he could do a bit more without the ball for this Palace team, he'd be such more of an asset for them. Crystal Palace welcome Aston Villa to Selhurst Park next weekend. Manchester City away after that. Brentford at home, then Newcastle away before they welcome Manchester United to Selhurst Park. It's United, Bournemouth, Newcastle, and then the Merseyside derby live on Talk Sport on Saturday, September the 3rd. Liverpool who are coming forward again a lovely ball by Alexander Arnold into Luis Diaz in the right channel inside the box now twisting turning trying to find a way through held up by Anderson Henderson's cross is deep Simakas tries to volley the ball back into the danger zone it's a flick of a defender comes back to Salah who shoots oh he's narrowly wide of the right hand up upright with Guaita sprawling away to his right in an emergency action because he knew he knew the quality that the Egyptian forward possesses and he was so close to putting Liverpool in front it's a good touch from Salah isn't it super effort didn't even look to uh, have the time to get a shot off with three Palace men around him it's a brilliant effort from Salah really unlucky could have been a phenomenal finish three minutes to go Danny Murphy told me before the match it was going to be 1-1 <laughs> 
Why didn't we put our money where your mouth was? Well, sometimes you get a feeling. I just saw the team sheet. I didn't expect to see what we've seen in terms of the sending off and the, the missed chances. But, yeah. Alexander-Arnold trying to send the ball down the right. Takes a cannon off the shins of Klein. Last change for Crystal Palace. And off comes Schlupp. And on comes the very exciting, very talented Michael Elise, who, uh, I must admit... He's coming back from an ankle issue. Last season, he was cracking when coming on off the bench. In particular against West Ham. He was brilliant in the cup against Millwall. He is a player who I think has a big future. And he does. Got great end product, doesn't he? Assists, goals, knows when to cross, when to shoot, when to pass. He's got all those wonderful attributes you want from a forward player. Be a big bonus if they could get him firing again. Uh, Liverpool only dropped 22 points all of last season. They are about to drop four in their first two games. They haven't uh, only picked up two points since 2003-04 when they'd only picked up one in their opening two games of the season. Is that yellow card for Trent Alexander-Arnold? No, Edouard. Edouard, I think it was, yeah. For blocking Trent Alexander-Arnold yeah. for taking the free kick which he wants to do now from the halfway line down the touch line towards Salah it's heavy but he's going to chase it into the corner he's not going to get there because Klein's done brilliantly and he goes towards the advertising holdings we've got uh, 90 seconds remaining already Liverpool will be four points behind the leaders Manchester City and Arsenal if they don't get a defining goal in this match in the last few minutes but they are the kind of team that always sneaks one in right at the very end they're very capable but even if they're not to get this win if I was Jurgen Klopp I'd be quite proud of the lads after going down to 10 yes it was a stupid mistake but they've coped really well with it got let off the hook a little bit by Zaha's poor finish but overall showed good resilience good character well, there's a lot more positive than negative about Liverpool yeah. in this display that is for sure uh, Luis Diaz has just been held by Joel Ward who has already been booked by the referee Paul Tierney and Virgil van Dijk has covered about 40 yards to remind him of that fact there will be five additional minutes it's hardly a booking is it we don't want to see players doing that sprinting 50 yards to tell the ref to get someone sent off you go and tell him huh? I'll tell him on the phone <laughs> kick then for Liverpool I wonder who's going to take this Trent Alexander-Arnold puts his left hand in the air he approaches the ball with his orange boots he drips it towards Fabinho it breaks for Carvalho oh! sends it wide on the volley from the edge of the 18-yard box driving the ball towards goal and it is a whisker away from a dream home debut for Fabio Carvalho what a great effort on his weak foot or supposed weak foot caught it lovely if you remember last week he had a volley with his other foot it just went over the bar at Craven Cottage lovely technique read the read the knockdown really well didn't he is that another yellow card for Luka Milivojevic this time uh, that then, would have been the icing on the cake for the young man wouldn't it oh, home debut the winner in the last minute cop end come on yeah, yeah, it's still time. Oh, it's yeah. been Sente Guaita who's been given a yellow card, the goalkeeper. And it's Liverpool come forward again. Uh, Anderson blocks it this time. And uh, Liverpool have it with uh, Alexander-Arnold up towards Sa Salah, who's offside. And it's going to be a free kick to the away side, who will take as much time as they can over this. So then, of course, we'll talk a lot about Liverpool during the game. And we have done. And afterwards... But Crystal Palace deserve quite a lot of credit for coming away from home and another big team and grinding out yet yeah. another point. I thought the second half defensively they were much better. Were, they'd obviously talked about the problems in the first half. I mean Liverpool might say should never have got to that situation because Nunez shouldn't have been sent, shouldn't have been sent, shouldn't have got himself sent off. No, he shouldn't have got And they should have taken more chances in the first half. Yeah, but sometimes things happen in a game where you have to you have to show a reaction. 
and uh, Liverpool have done that. They can be they can be pleased with the way they've controlled the game since that since that happened. They can't control what Nunez did, and they're still in with a chance of winning this game. And they have the ball again over on the left hand side. It's picked up by uh, Simicas, who guides the ball to Henderson. Henderson with a chance now, maybe to cross. Five minutes of added time. We're into that now. Henderson does cross into the box, aimed towards Alexander Arnold. It's away by Gerhi. Drops on the edge of the penalty area. Was there a foul there? The referee says there was on Elise by Carvalho. Well, he's given a yellow card to Costa Simicas. I think that was for kicking the ball away. And uh, it's going to be a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. The other plus, of course, for Liverpool is Diaz with his wonderful goal. Getting himself off the mark, ready, getting his confidence up for the forthcoming games. He's going to have to make a plan for the next couple of games, of course, without Nunez. Let's hope Firmino gets himself fit. Well, no Jota as well, no Firmino, yeah. no Thiago, no Keita for a while. He's back now on the bench, but they've had a lot of injury issues at they the have. start of the season. And that's another thing coming through that. I think when things don't go your way in a game of football and you don't play at your best or you're not quite at, it, at your sharpest, you don't lose matches. That's the key. We've seen City for seasons start badly. Here comes Elise over on the far side for Liverpool, Move, uh, for Crystal Palace. Moving the ball towards the right angle of the penalty area, then down to the byline. He's blocked and then it's shepherded out towards the far side. And away it goes for a throw into Crystal Palace. Into stoppage time, deep into stoppage time now. With uh, Crystal Palace earning themselves a corner. And there haven't been too many of those, Danny Murphy. <coughs> Do they go for the win? Or do they play it short and see how the draw? I'd be tempted to go and play it short, I have to be honest. <laughs> They're not going to, you know. No, but you have to be careful. These are the moments. They're going to send the big boys up into the box for one last chance to snatch three points at Anfield. Delivered in towards Richard. It's chested oh, down. It's poked oh. towards goal by Anderson and it agonisingly flicks past the upright. What a chance that was for Crystal Palace right at the end. They've had their chances to go back in front. Haven't taken them. Throw in over on the far side. Liverpool want to get it moving quickly. Carvalho plays it to Henderson. He helps it forward. It's an up and under away by Gerhi. Drops on the edge of the box. Henderson has followed it in. Alexander Arnold now picks it up. They need a delivery into the box. We're nearly four minutes into the five that are been added on here at Anfield tonight the referee checks his watch there's an idiot on the pitch the referee continues to play on the referee now has to stop the game because that idiot is now being barracked by Jurgen Klopp he is being shouted at and screamed at by the German manager because he has just cost his team the chance of fashioning an attack in the last few seconds of a Premier League game that they are not going to win now Alexander-Arnold restarts the game, tosses it into the box, it's headed clear, it bounces on the edge of the penalty area, but still Liverpool try to win it, a back heel from Diaz, it doesn't come off and it's taken away by Elise, it's won by Diaz, gets it back to Alisson, but it's a little bit heavy, he controls it anyway. We're deep into stoppage time. It's almost over now. One last chance. It's sent forward. Headed away by Anderson, who's been terrific again. It's out towards the near side. Climb forward. Gomez away. It's out of play. Henderson looks to try and hand it off to Klein, but he's going to take his time because he knows that Crystal Palace are seconds away from once again upsetting the big boys on their travels. Once again taking points which no one thought that they were going to take they're going to share the points with Liverpool away at Anfield and after their win here in 2017 they have regularly been beaten up by the red machine but not tonight Darwin Nunez has been sent off I have to say I've got to mention Lou Diaz second half performance with and without the ball has been absolutely phenomenal credit to him he scored a terrific goal as well but it wasn't enough to beat Crystal Palace what a fantastic end to the weekend just another manic Monday live on talk sport Crystal Palace take points Away at one of the super clubs once again. They beat Manchester City last season. They've taken a point 
at Anfield. Darwin Nunez was sent off. Liverpool had to play the last half an hour with 10 men. Luis Diaz managed to score a terrific goal to give them hope. But it's more drop points from Liverpool. It does mean it's their le- worst start to a season in 10 years. But there were a lot of positives to take from that 90 minutes. They lacked a bit of ruthlessness to dispatch a plucky Palace side who were at their belligerent best. Liverpool came into the campaign blitzing the champions in the Community Shield, but at times in that first half, ironically, their finishing was a little dry. As a result, it's Liverpool 1, Crystal Palace 1.